Thank you very much, President Officer. I wanted to start my remarks where uh, Rob Gibson started his and to reflect on my own experience of uh, interacting with the Gaelic community and becoming or coming to recognise just what a precious part uh, of our national life and the fabric of our national life Gaelic uh, represents. And I would defy anyone uh, to go to the kind of event that Rob Gibson talked about or any uh, gathering of Gaels uh, anywhere in Scotland uh, and not be uh, touched and moved, deeply moved, by their ability with ease to enter into storytelling, to recite poetry, uh, to sing unaccompanied, uh, to play musical instruments, uh, and to do so, as again Rob Gibson said, with such ease and such confidence, and in a way that Dave Thompson just referred to his uh, own granddaughter's ability to now do that. And the sense you get in going to any such uh, gathering or any such event that you are getting a, an access to an entire culture, an entire set of values which are both ancient and very modern uh, at the same time. And no government of whatever complexion at any point in time in Scotland could ever watch that language die or, or, or begin to die in the way that we've actually seen. So every government uh, in recent times, and I pay tribute to, uh, I don't often do this, to the Conservative government uh, uh, of, the, of the earlier part, or the latter part of the last century, and indeed what we did and what the government here are now doing, because every government must do everything possible to try and make sure that the language doesn't just survive, but it's got the chance to grow uh, and to thrive. And we all know from the numbers that uh, are now speaking Gaelic that there is still a decline in the numbers, but I, as I've said in previous debates, am more optimistic than I ever have been that we can turn that situation around. <coughs> I regarded it as an enormous privilege to have the chance as a minister uh, to both help design and to take the Gaelic Language Act uh, through this parliament. But I always knew that in doing so, that was not ever going to be the final legislative word on Gaelic. Uh, it was an act for this moment in time, for this stage in our development. And I fully expect in years to come we will see further Gaelic language acts to try and reflect the times uh, of developed uh, since, since today. Uh, and I hope that that will in fact happen. But at the centre of the current language act that we are working with is the notion of language plans and language planning. Now, that's not an end in itself. It's simply a vehicle to drive progress uh, in what we all share as the objective uh, of moving things forward. And requiring public organisations, which play a huge part uh, in our private lives and our public lives, to take the lead in beginning that process of further normalisation of Gaelic in everybody's experience. And in that context, the position of the Scottish Executive and its language plan is vital to what happens in all other parts uh, of the public sector. Uh, the Scottish Executive Plan needs to set the standard. Uh, it needs to drive the standard. Otherwise, if it is not setting it, other people will use the excuse, well, the Scottish Executive did not do that, so we are not going to do it either. So this is a very, very uh, important plan. And the plan has also got the benefit of impacting not just on the central administration of the Executive, but having an influence on health, on transport, on education, on the arts, on law, on housing, on policing, uh, and so on. Now, I know from my experience in, uh, in working in government as being a minister that there are many, many enthusiasts for Gaelic uh, in the civil service. And, and I see at the back of the chamber two of the officials that supported me in that role who would be amongst those real enthusiasts for Gaelic, who fight the corner for Gaelic within the civil service. But, presiding officer, you know, it would also not be wise to not also recognise that within the civil service there are also deep pockets of scepticism about Gaelic and about this whole mission uh, on which we are embarked. Some people are completely unconvinced by this, let me tell you. I have experienced that, but I am also outweighed in that by the enthusiasts. And this plan needs to make it clear that this government and successive governments will uh, act and is acting to promote uh, Gaelic uh, and expects the civil service to deliver uh, on that agenda. Now, the minister needs to set the tone. Uh, and take the lead and drive progress and to brook no foot dragging uh, at all on the road that we all need to travel. Now, I suppose the question is, presiding officer, in relation to this particular plan, uh, is it ambitious enough? Is it aspirational enough? Now, there's nothing in the plan that I would seek to take out. I think all the, all the ground that it covers uh, is extremely encouraging. It does make steady uh, and regular progress. But if I was to be slightly critical, I would say that it's quite modest uh, in its ambitions. There's a lot of talk about guidance and about audits of various things, and that's fine, and I, I welcome that for what it might do, but we also need to move all of that into action. There's also a lot of talk in, in, in the language of the document about maintaining funding, but little actually about growing activity in the way that Ken uh, McIntosh talked about. And if I can suggest five areas where I hope the government can think about strengthening the plan. And the first one is about road signs. Um, 
Now, some people think we get obsessed about that, but actually it is important to see the language uh, visible in our nation. Uh, it gives people a sense of place. It gives people a sense of a cultural identity. Uh, and I recognise in the plan they do talk about making progress on the roadsides leading, uh, the trunk roadsides leading to the islands. Now, that's fine, and I welcome that, but we've got to go much further than that. The, the report then goes on to talk about research on the economic, social, and environmental effects and the safety effects of having Gaelic uh, road signs. <clears throat> well, with great respect, Minister, I do not think we need any more research on this. I think we need action on this. Uh, I've watched, I have to say, uh, in my previous life as a councillor, uh, and more recently, 20 years of resistance to trunk road signage being uh, adopted. And we've got to move beyond that point. In the way that Rob Gibson touched on, yes, there are costs involved, but we also have to replace road signs, and there's a way of doing that without actually adding to the cost. Now, I think we've got to do it in a sensible way, in the way that Ted uh, Brocklebank uh, referred to. And I think it is unwise to force upon communities who are sceptical or who don't feel an association with Gaelic signs. But there are plenty of places in Scotland, and all the evidence is lots of places where we could make progress without offending anybody. So I hope, Minister, you simply overrule the Roads Department and make sure that we make further progress on it. If I've Bob got time, a brief I'd... intervention. Uh, thank you, uh, President Officer. Uh, I think that uh, the experience in Wales shows that there are no problems about people dealing with bilingual signs, and perhaps we should, with a united voice, urge the Minister to get to those and that actually uh, tell the uh, people who are uh, putting up our road signs to get on with a job. I, I absolutely concur with that. And the point I was just coming on to make was that if, in Canada last summer, seeing bilingual signs anywhere, I didn't see any greater road carnage. Uh, in visiting Wales, I've certainly not seen any greater road carnage there because of signs. But I do get a sense when I visit Wales or other countries where there is bilingual bilingual signage, you do get that sense of place, that sense of identity, that sense of culture, and we need to do that in our big cities in Scotland as well as just on the way to the islands. The second point I want to make is in, in relation to Salmer Ostig. Again, the report refers to its importance. It is a hugely significant institution in the Gaelic world. Uh, it has made a huge contribution hitherto, but it still has got capacity to do more. And I hope the report, when it comes to be revised, can talk about the growth ambitions, the greater role Salmer Ostig can play as not just a, 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 an educational institution, but as a cultural institution uh, and many other dimensions of its life. Gallic medium education, too, others are referred to, I won't labour the point, needs to grow. And we need to see in the report and in the plan that commitment to grow, not just primary, not just nursery, but critically growing the secondary education that allows young people more to commit to nursery and to primary because they can complete their education in Gaelic. And I think the other dimension is about Gaelic arts. Uh, is, it's a hugely important part of how we move things forward. Uh, to see young people in the Gaelic communities of today moving between modern European, Western, contemporary rock, but also Gaelic music is wonderful to behold, and we must allow that to strengthen, but not just music and singing, dance, theatre, the whole range of the arts needs to develop. And finally, in relation to, to Gaelic uh, television, others have made the point we need to build on the progress, we need to move to Freeview, and the great advantage of the broadcasting system is the point that Ted Brocklebank also made about up to 600,000 people watching that from a Gaelic speaking community in Scotland of only 60,000 people. That demonstrates that television can broaden the appeal, broaden the understanding, broaden the ability of people to participate. So I hope the Minister will address all of those when we come to review the consultation. One other point, I would love to see some Gaelic signage on Victoria Quay. It would be more difficult in St Andrew's House because of, I want bolder signage, I should perhaps say, uh, than, 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 than um, the, the, it would be more difficult in St Andrew's House because it is probably a listed building. I hope Victoria Key never becomes a listed building, I should say. But I do hope we can keep moving that forward. The importance of that is that is a symbol of Scottish Government. Loads of people enter that from all sorts of walks of life. And having bold Gaelic signage uh, on the building as well as within the building becomes an important part of the message of Government. We take this seriously. So, President Officer, I welcome very much your ability to give me extra time to fill up the time for your debate, but also I welcome the plan. I think we can do better. I hope it will be improved and strengthened after the consultation.